All right, it's six in the morning. We just landed in Panama City. We have a nine and a half hour layover and we have a choice. Stay here at the airport and do nothing or get out there and explore. And so, which choice did we make? Was there really a choice or was it we're going to explore and what are we gonna do? What we did was watch a massive cruise ship magically levitate 54 feet right before our eyes through the miracle of modern engineering. How does this happen? And just how much did this place change the way we travel, ship, and navigate around the entire planet? More than you could ever imagine. Science nerds, you're gonna love this, and we're gonna explain why as we take you to the Panama Canal in this episode of Window Seat. after 10 o'clock at night, we're going to Panama. We got a canal to visit, and we got an overnight flight to sleep on. Good news is we've received some nice upgrades on the plane, so hopefully we sleep better. Before we get too involved in this episode of Window Seat, seems like as good a time as any to finally explain something, our name. All right, so some people have wondered why window seat, and it's because when you sit at the window seat, you get the first glimpse of what awaits you down below. You get the first visual of the magic that is you know, 30,000 feet underneath you. And so that's why I think the window seat is crucial when you book a flight. Don't mess around with these aisles or these middle seats, certainly not middle seats. Go for the window and you are going to be in for a real treat. Personally, I prefer the aisle so I don't have to step over people so I go to the bathroom. But here's the thing, aisle seat, this doesn't have quite the ring to it that window seat does, so that's why we went with the window seat. With that little bit of fascinating trivia out of the way and with our six hour flight in the books. Hello. Oh, how you doing? Hi. We are on the ground, rendezvousing with our tour guide and on the road. Destination, the one thing we can't leave this country without seeing. For those who don't know, the idea for the Panama Canal dates all the way back to the 1500s. A Spanish explorer realized just a thin strip of land separated the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans right here. But they couldn't figure out how to get through. They tried to come up with a canal plan, but finally deemed it impossible. Fast forward a few centuries, and the men behind the Suez Canal and the Eiffel Tower tried too. A French company began digging a canal across Panama, but it was a disaster. The planning was awful, disease killed like 25,000 workers, they ran out of money, not good. That's where we Americans came in. All right, here we are, Panama Canal. It's uh, still early in the morning. We haven't slept much, but uh, it's cool. It's nice and warm here, so that wakes things up. As we arrive at the Miraflores Lock near Panama City, we are among the first in line. And after we drop about 15 bucks US for an entry ticket and head up to an observation deck overlooking the canal, we're about to learn more about the US role in this modern marvel. <laughs> Turns out in the early 1900s, we kind of helped Panama revolt from Colombia and declare their independence in no small part so that we could take over their operations here. A treaty gave us 500 square miles to construct the canal and the Americans would get to run it in perpetuity. So as of 1914, this place was finally built and it changed everything. This is the, the time saver. Uh, if you happen to be captaining a ship across the uh, world because if you didn't take the Panama Canal, you would have to spend 22 days going around the southern tip of South America and back up into the uh, Pacific. So this thing took a long time to build, but it saves a whole lot of time now. So how exactly does it work? Well, ships like this cruise ship enter from one side and they're towed by those electric locomotives you see right there on a little track that will keep them centered in the lock. Once the gates are closed, they go through a series of locks that will eventually raise the water some 85 feet above sea level. It works like a staircase. From there, they spend about 10 hours crossing the 40 mile long canal before repeating the same process on the other side. And then they're off to explore the world. We were just as fascinated to see it all happen as the people aboard this Viking cruise ship who experienced it when we visited. Pretty cool, you know, not often do you get to see, especially like a cruise ship rolling through this place. And just, it's, it's a slow process. It's not a thrill a minute. <laughs> But the engineering on it is really cool, and to know they did this over 100 years ago, 
it's pretty fascinating to watch, especially as you see these massive ships between the cargo ships and the cruise ships coming through. It's quite the feat of engineering. It's really cool to be here. It's full of navigation It's full of purpose. As you can tell from the size of the crowd, we weren't the only ones here. Crowds are huge, and they live up to their name, crowding you out at every opportunity. So, you get a good spot, hold firm, hold tight. Yeah, that's a very good pointer. You know, you get you get a good spot, and then people try and nudge their way in, and that's why the video is bumpy in a couple of spots, because my camera got nudged, but you get the picture. By the way, if you were wondering, it is not exactly cheap for those ships to pass through here. Every year, some 14,000 ships use the canal. Lots of boats moving through including cruise ships. And they each have to pay a toll. For a big ship, that toll can run almost half a million dollars. That means nearly two billion bucks in tolls are collected here every year. So it makes sense that the Americans would want to be involved in all of this. But it turns out we aren't anymore. If any agreement between two nations is to last, it must serve the best interest of both nations. In 1977, President Jimmy Carter transferred power of the canal back to the Panamanians, an unpopular thing to do in the U.S., but the right thing to do, according to him. And that has made him a national hero here in Panama. In December 1999, the Panamanians officially took over, and it's been their canal ever since. We learned all about that history at the Miraflores Visitor Center, right next to the locks, where there's a food court and an IMAX theater that tells the story of the canal in 3D. All right, so let's get real. If you're looking for an action-packed thrill ride of a tourist stop in Panama, this might not be the place for you. But if you, like these throngs of people, are into the science and engineering and ingenuity and history of the Panama Canal, you're gonna love this. Whether you realize it or not, it revolutionized how we ship things, how we travel, and it changed global commerce forever. When you put it in that perspective, pretty cool. Yeah, maybe it's not a thrill a minute, but it's still all right. <laughs> all right, this will not be called the fast and the furious. <laughs> the slow and the sluggish. All right, that's it for this episode of Window Seat, but our adventure in Panama is not over yet. Stay tuned to our YouTube channel as we take you to the Old Town neighborhood of Casco Viejo in just a couple of weeks. And please don't forget to subscribe and hit like and share too if you're so inclined as we continue our travels to every country on the planet. And if we miss something in this episode, please let us know in the comments. We're back with a new episode next Friday. Meantime, be sure to check out these other episodes from Window Seat. See you next time.